Hold up, bueno gente. My name is Tulso Dragon 344. When doing an event, my friend's been nagging me about and waiting much longer than Pucci with his full moon. Consider this a continuation of my DBAF version Latino, or the Spanish DBAF, vid I made a while back. Because without the bit of knowledge from there, you'll most likely have way too many questions that have extremely likely been answered there. In any case, let's define our terms first before we get into this virtually endless rabbit hole. Ever since AF came about, thanks to a certain toy, GG. And PGV. Around that time, people weren't simply satisfied with just looking at art and reading lines and paragraphs of text, or sometimes comic manga like images of what was described from said text. They needed something tangible, something that can grant them the experience, something that'll visualize and animate those still fan arts, something that'll last for generations and generations to come. Up came the idea of retexturing and messing with characters in Budokai 3, creating Dragon Ball Budokai A. And good luck trying to find the OG, cause there's many Budokai AFs around the internet. But that's Budokai 3, not Budokai Tenkaichi 3 like the title of the thumbnail suggests. I hear you saying regardless of whether or not you truly said it. Well, yeah, baby steps, folks. Plus the limited and 2D-ness of this popular fighting game can satisfy so many people for so long. <laughs> So, an alternative must be found. Enter Budokai Tenkaichi 3 modding. Now yes, they did do something similar to what they did to Budokai 3 and also Infinite World, and even every version of Shin Budokai and later Tenkaichi Tag Team, but Triple T is a different story, believe it or not, which I'll discuss in a later vid coming soon. Whilst also making a fully translated version with Spanish audio and everything, the audio being poorly rich from the Spanish Latino dubs of episodes and movies of course. But as the years passed by, they mostly stuck with BD3. TBXV came and went, DBXV2 came and is still going as I'm recording this, DB Fighters came and I don't know, and they're still focused on BD3. Why? I wondered. Doing a bit of research with my friends again, I looked into the reason why BT3 was the definitive choice for my Spanish, Hispanic, and Latino bros, and man did I feel supremely dumb when I found out the reason. Of course cause nostalgia, plus apparently BD3 handled the combat better in their eyes. Look, I've played BD3 when I got my Nintendo Wii back around 2011, double IRC. I'd stay up until 9 a freaking m. It was a vacation, so relax. Playing story mode, trying to get all the Dragon Balls to unlock all the characters, and or watching Five Fives on the screen while sipping on my milk. Man, simpler times, am I right? Oh my god, what's wrong with your face? So, I agree, the game is such a classic that Bamco shafted by making Raging Blast 1 and 2 and Ultimate Tenkaichi. IMO and Bamco's eyes, they did make BT4, 5, and 6 after all, but they didn't deliver as much as BT3 did. Yet still, DBXV2 is much more popular now among fans, and mods are prevalent there than ever. Why not take the advantage of the popularity and move modding there instead? Turns out BT3 was easier on PC hardware and on modding methodology in general. The hilarity of it all, especially when some of the main tools they use to mod BT3 are convoluted, outdated, and buggy AF. Huh, get it? There are multiple ups pros of moving to DBXV2, but you can't change a tradition when it's continuous, I guess. Okay, going back to modding. AF was still being developed, quote unquote. Yet AF wasn't the only thing that interested our bros. At some point, even AF would deliver so much. Naturally, their brains ran wild. And here we have the idea of using everything else. Be it other anime, cartoons, games, movies, shows, franchises, even effing brands and celebrities. Seriously, everything. Perfect segue way to the next portion of this vid, the formatting. PS2 games generally come in two known formats, BinQ and ISO. BT3 is ISO format, so not a CD format game, it's DVD. Why is that important? It's important to know in case the idea of playing these mods on actual PS2 hardware ever comes to mind. Oh, which most of these ISO should preferably be played on PC only, really. Plus, BT3 is a big game, BinQ are known slash used to store loads of info. Plus, because PS2 games are bootleggable, some of these mods are burned on discs and being sold in countries like like, not limited to, the Spanish, Hispanic, Latino countries, some Asian countries of which I can't exactly pinpoint right now, and even a few Middle Eastern countries. Heck, I may find bootlegs here in my country, but have to look extremely hard to find them. Back to the ISOs. I can hear someone chuckling right now. You know who you are. Don't worry, we'll get into who that is in the future. BT3 also has types. Here is just the most common types I've seen and have. 1. Generic. Meaning, nothing crazy like AF for adding everything else. Stuff like BT4 where they add regular Dragon Ball characters that came after or before Z, or in Super like Fred the Key and Broly Super, or characters that quote, didn't make it into the cut, end quote. 2. AF. Yeah, either solely or mostly AF, featuring characters and transformations from there. 3. Crossover. The EVERYTHING. 
no need to repeat what everything means. 4. Dragon Ball Crossover Similar to regular crossovers but solely with Dragon Ball characters, both official and fan-made. 5. Mascot YouTuber related An ISO usually made by that YouTuber, featuring characters from the same YouTuber's preferences and sometimes with a YouTuber's theme or same idea by a known modder. 6. Fake sequel prequel game titles. Like I have an ISO claiming to be Xenoverse. And I am not making this up as you can search that on YouTube yourself. Just type something like DBZ BT3 Xenoverse and that ISO should pop up. 7. Rare Mods Collection ISOs. Features mods that are indeed rare or not commonly slash frequently used. And 8. An amalgamation of some or all of the above because yeah. As for who's behind these compilaciones, here is some of the well known people behind the creation or distribution of these ISOs. These names just came right at the top of my head, so do apologize if I forgot to mention other people. Pipe Game, Franco Assassin, DB Zika, Nexus Z, used to be called Darkness C, Xavier DBZ, Matthias Nerd, Rit Juanpa, and X Jose BT3. Just to name a few of many. Those who make individual mods, uh, that's a list of its own, which you'll most likely find in the description of multiple Discargar ISO vids, and I can't list them all here, lest I wish to make my life infierno in editing this bloody vid, lel. But you can start with Kirikichu, as his content is in English. And with Team BT4, if you're interested in playing the fan made project. Bro, saying BT4 sounds like PT4, which are small confectionery sweets. <laughs> as for showcasers, here's a few I know JHKuno89, Tio Medusin, Don't Know How to Say Your Name, and Lucas BR. Do kindly check them out, especially if you understand Spanish or the other Latino Hispanic languages and dialects, as there is tons and tons of diamonds waiting to be mined out and appreciated. Even though Kagi kinda did that but didn't bother like mentioning names and stuff last I checked. Probably cause he voices Charlotte so maybe legal reasons? Is that also why he kinda stopped modded B3 vids? Going back to the individual mods, because yeah I gotta talk about that. Essentially these guys don't mess around. Like for example, the new DBS movie, as I'm making this, Dragon Super Superhero, the new characters Gamma 1 and two. Give these modders like, I don't know, a few months, weeks, or even days, and they would have finished the 3D models. Give them a bit more, and they'd finish the entire mod for BG3. You work fast! As for animations, they can simply borrow the existing anims from the game, or even consume so much time in making their own through either mixing existing anims or making original anims from scratch. Similar thing for voice files, textures, and do keep in mind, this isn't just for characters. They'll do and put in similar effort for stages, menu arts, even attempts at story mode, which is extremely rare. Now you understand why I said they don't mess around? Now that I got that out of the way, and before we move on, I need to explain my situation to you folks, as you deserve to know. Around two years back, I made Gokuverse. Now, I had to learn how all that modding stuff was done first, which I'll showcase in a video in the future explaining how the modding process was like. After I was done, I made two vids. One was an Avada save vid, which was a simple showcase vid showcasing the characters I used for the ISO, and the vid which made my friends ask so many goddamn questions, and maybe the few two-digit subs I had back in the day. And then the Discord God vid, where people can go and download the ISO for themselves to enjoy. Weeks pass, and the Titan Jage Kuro 89 himself made a stream, then many after, playing the ISO and reviewing it. He saw the weird transformations, the crashes and bugs. Yeah, yeah, bugs. In a modded ISO 2007 game. Oh, what irony. And said he would look forward to a fixed version. See, here's the thing. One, I'm still new and need a lot more time to learn and ensure that the mods work without issue, just like most of the ISOs I've tried out and seen. Two, I was, am, and still will be working on a version 2, where bugs get fixed and issues get resolved. Yet what's holding me up are three things. One, I'm alone. I've asked for help from the Spanish mod community and none would help except through giving me hints since either they were busy or they just didn't respond to my need of help. Two, it's been a recurring theme lately but yes, I'm still busy IRL. I have little time to focus on fixing the issues. And three, I'm starting again from scratch in hopes of avoiding making the same mistakes and to make sure everything is in working fashion with no errors. And since we're on the same topic, I do apologize for not making updates on V2 plus apologize for the surprise Gokuverse release out of nowhere then silence without explanation, and once more for such late explanation and said explanation being here. Hope that's been made clear, so let's move on. Several months later. A quick update on that one. So, about Gokuverse version 2. 
It's probably not gonna happen because, of course, me being extremely busy. And if it is, or if it will be, then it may come to fruition and be realized after a whole long while. Like, we're talking maybe years from now. Because, well, I'm not the freest guy around. <laughs> Let's put it that way. And it's really hard to mod especially with the tools available it really is excruciatingly difficult and very time consuming more so like a byproduct of it being hard but yeah so i don't want to like depress a lot of people but yeah if there are any modders out there who have any form of knowledge on bd3 modding and stuff and want to take my place then please feel free you know the doors are open you could just take my id and just make your own better version of it and i'm all for that because that's the whole idea, right? Is to take ideas and make them better and be creative with it. At least that's the kind of freedom that Mana gives. So I'm allowing you to exercise that freedom. And yeah, sorry for that little update, but it is what it is. You get the idea. Allow me to dedicate this section for the holy grail of BG3 ISOs. You probably know where this is going. As I mentioned earlier, BG3 is huge and having multiple ISOs of modded BG3 is tough to store, so had to improvise. Allow me to grant you this opportunity to see my current collection. Here it is. It's a lot, I know. Yet there's a slight good reason why that is. See, a few modded BD3 YouTubers have their channel's game ended, and thus their ISOs too. People keep claiming that once something is on the internet, it stays there forever. Well, I disagree since their links and their ISOs didn't stay on the internet, except for those who still have those ISOs with them, though they're too lazy or even too greedy to share them. So, although I don't really intend to be the best long-term solution, I want to preserve these before they get lost. Their ones and zeros wiped off the face of the online community. Besides, I'd like to have them offline and just pick one I want to play again and just do it. Makes my life easier that way. And if I find a mod from these ISOs that I can use for my own, I can simply extract and install. Conceptually, but the process ain't easy. And it's best we park at this gas station and refuel for the next vet by explaining my sudden interest in mod BT3. As alluded to before, the idea of modding a game from 2007 and continuing to do so, even after newer games being released, baffles me to this day. I mean, if it weren't for that chuckling guy I called out earlier, he's probably dying of laughter right now. That collection wouldn't even exist, nor would this interest in modded BT3 unless Kagi continued making content then. I'd consider trying that stuff myself hypothetically. I enjoyed these mods, and they've changed the way I understood life. They gave me more meaning to looking at things from a different perspective and appreciate their art. I know in the AF vid I may have sounded like I hated or mocked their work, but again, it was just my honest reactions, plus I don't hate their work. I may not accept or agree to the direction they took AF in terms of all that demonic and satanic BS, yet I still respect the fact they didn't want AF to die. Heck, DB News, a channel where I sourced the CB vs PP fight, uh -huh, then. at Infinito in 20k, Thank the modders for going to the extent they did to realize such work, albeit in a 2007 PS2 game with limitations. That type of commitment a lot of other communities are looking for from their fans. It's truly nuts and insane. It's like Dragon Ball since Akira Toriyama placed his pen or pencil on that piece of paper was destined to always be that one anime that will have this much greatness that none will dare to claim they came half close to what these Spanish bows came to. Their mods may be hilarious or cringe to look at, their times may be wasted on modding old games, their stories may be too cursed to attempt to read or take in. However, you can't but appreciate their adoration, glorification, preservation, and laudation for all that hard work. Remember that incident with the last episodes of DBS where it went as far as Japan having to request Mexico IRC, to shut down the people's massive public screenings of said episodes? If you don't, look up the last episode's live reactions on YouTube and witness the amount of people sitting down and watching as Goku freeze and 17 battle Deeran, chanting, whistling, and cheering as if it was the FIFA Grand Finals or the NFL or UFC. Dragon Ball, as much as it is Japanese in origins, has ingrained itself in the traditions of these Spanish and Hispanic Latino people, bringing them all together in peace and harmony. Man, that was a bit of a weird red herring of an ending there, lol. But yeah, that's it for this introductory vid to modded Spanish BT3 or BT3 version Latino. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this as much as I have. Making the script alone was honestly a great time since I show some love for what I enjoy. Don't forget, I'll be making two more vids on modded B3, first explaining the modding and last explaining the other details that I won't spoil since giving you any hints now will ruin what I have in store for that. And vids on AF, the other old DB games and anything else that fits in between, I guess. Yes. Nevertheless, trust when I say that last BT3 vet will make you beckon mother loads of questions. Anyway, thanks for watching, and as literally always, take care, stay safe, and peace.